Hello there everybody, Below 10,000 here, bringing you another Super Smash Bros. Ultimate DLC Theory Discussion video. The other day, I posted on my Twitter asking you guys if you saw any good threads regarding speculation for Smash DLC that I should consider that weren't wrote by yourselves. And you guys came out in droves to showcase various different threads but I wanted to focus on a character that I have not actually discussed before because, you know, I could always discuss my Professor Layton's or my Phoenix Wright's or Erdrick once again. But today, I feel like discussing a character that I'm not necessarily confident in myself, but I want to see the case for them as they do have a valid shot. We are going to be taking a look at a thread by at Smash Lara, who states why Lara Croft not only should but could make it into Smash Bros. Ultimate as DLC, so that's very exciting. Lara Croft, a gaming icon from the PlayStation 1 era who has remained prevalent throughout the generations, even if their franchise has had a little bit of a dip in quality, it then rose back up with the reboots, and Lara Croft is now pretty relevant. I mean, Shadow of the Tomb Raider only released last year, after all. So, let's take a look at this thread, but before we get started, I want to give a quick shout-out. Now, this is something I've been meaning shout-out for a while. I want to give a quick shout-out to my friends at Rasa Studios, because they are hosting a Minecraft game show called the Nox Squad Game Show. It is a fully edited, like, professional, like, you could watch this on TV, and it is, like, that well edited. Uh, it's a show that I got to compete in with my friends Mitch and Rick. We were the high ground team, and they released episode one uh, last week on Saturday, and every Saturday they release a new episode, and if you guys want to go watch that, please uh, give them some support. Links will be in the description. There'll be a card link in the top right corner. Just go and send them some love. They really deserve the views. They, it's the most professional looking experience I've been a part of, and I would highly recommend you check it out. So anyway, back to Lara Croft. Let's get started with Smash Lara's thread. Here is why Lara Croft not only should, but could make it into Smash Bros. Ultimate as DLC. I'll be using a blend of internet sleuthing and speculation to make my case. Hashtag Tomb Raider, hashtag Smash Bros, hashtag Lara Croft for Smash Bros. Let's get into it. First, I would like to take on Dragon Quest as many view that as Lara's biggest competition as it is more popular. In an April 2019 press release, Square Enix notes that the gap between Dragon Quest and Tomb Raider is around 4 million units, which they also have a photo to prove this evidence is correct. It is also worth noting that Tomb Raider is 10 years younger than Dragon Quest as a franchise. Dragon Quest has more games because of this, and Dragon Quest might be getting a movie soon, but Tomb Raider has had three, with another being greenlit very recently. I think you get the point by now. We'll get back to Dragon Quest later, let's focus on Lara for now. In terms of single characters, she is the third most successful behind Mario and Sonic. I don't really need to tell you who she is, you know. Your mum probably knows, games, movies, ads, even streets, she's done it all. I kind of disagree there. You're saying she's the most successful video game character to be on Mario and Sonic, but then you ignore mascots like, say, Pikachu from Pokemon, who is infinitely, I would say, more popular than Lara Croft. Uh, so, uh, unless there is literally a list that says these are the most popular uh, characters factually, evidently, I I'm not going to take your word on this. That feels a bit like propaganda, but I don't deny that Lara Croft is insanely popular. She is the definitive female heroine for a lot of a lot of people out there. She is that female strong representation in the gaming media that people wanted back in the day, and she's a badass British a bitch, and that's a good thing. Uh, so, fans of Square's RPGs have a rep in Cloud. There's a whole other side to Square Enix that isn't full of JRPGs. Tomb Raider, Hitman, Just Cause, etc. Wouldn't a company want to show themselves as dynamic and multifaceted? One as big as Square Enix surely would. That is true, but then you also think that RPGs specifically come in all different shapes and sizes. There are turn-based RPGs, there are action-based RPGs. So for example, if you put Cloud in there, and then say you put 2B from Nier Automata in there, you can't really call them the same, despite the fact that technically Nier Automata is an RPG in the sense that you do level up by beating enemies. So perhaps we could see Hitman Just Cause? Or Tomb Raider in there. Tomb Raider is the most likely of the three. I, I don't see Just Cause getting into Smash. I don't think the audience is really crossed there. And Hitman, 
Ooh, no, I, I don't think he would really make sense, especially since we already have kind of Joker, who is already a kind of thief slash assassin. Uh, but Tomb Raider's Lara Croft, I think, does work with Smash Brothers. She's had enough uh, reboots and reincarnations that I think we could find a definitive version for Lara that would work in the context of Smash Brothers. Uh, but those, are, those other franchises, I, I wouldn't really put much stock in them. Uh, but I do agree, I think Lara Croft would be an interesting character from Square Enix simply because it would showcase an entirely new genre from said company. The problem is that Square Enix is mostly known for their RPGs. Back when they were Squaresoft, they had a whole bunch of RPGs that were getting released uh, all across the 90s and, and the early 2000s, and Square Enix is just mainly known for their RPGs. It's a real shame for any other uh, brands underneath their little umbrella of marketing, but the fact is RPGs are what people uh, associate with Square, so that's why RPGs tend to get the focus when it comes to Square representation. When you look at Square Enix's most popular games, you see Final Fantasy VII at number one, uh, Cloud is already in Smash, take one look below, and you see Tomb Raider 2013. Whilst Final Fantasy takes up a lot of space in the top 10, Tomb Raider breaks it up now and then. Alright, we've got all those Final Fantasies, we do have Tomb Raider 2013. Now, Tomb Raider 2013 was an exceptionally popular uh, reboot to the Tomb Raider franchise. Everyone was excited to see Lara return as a character, and return she did in amazing fashion. I played the game, I loved it, I thought it was great, a little bit slow at times but a brilliant reboot and a great way of showcasing Lara as an actual human, as opposed to the slightly flawless, perfect badass she was in the original games, where there wasn't really much room for character development, so to speak. So, Dragon Quest XI is getting a Nintendo-backed port, right? That might be the only hurdle for her right now, but they did the promo in Nintendo Directs, and if you aren't interested in XI from that, I don't know what a Smash character would do. I actually agree. If Dragon Quest XI wasn't interesting with that massive promo they gave us in the Direct, why would a Smash character change that? That being said, I do think a majority of people who are interested in Erdrick outweigh the people who are saying Erdrick is a bad character, or a Dragon Rest Rep is a bad character, simply because I feel like that, even though I'm a part of that group, I feel like it's a vocal minority. Uh, before anyone says Fire Emblem, we didn't have much Fire Emblem in the West before Melee. We've had Dragon Quest in the West for a long time, and nobody bit. Let's dissect Smash's DLC promotional history. Corrin, that's it. People think Joker, but we don't really have any concrete info. Well, we know that Joker was not a promotional pick. Joker was a pick because Sakurai literally went and asked them, hey, can we put Joker in the game? And they said yes. Uh, as for the Dragon Quest in the West argument, the fact that they're pushing it now is because they want people to buy it in the West. Dragon Quest XI is the first game in the West to finally really break the mold and be popular, and it releasing on the Switch is gonna sell tons, I know it is. And I think if they add a character from Dragon Quest into Smash, then that's just gonna help sell the franchise even more, and I think keeping it on a Nintendo console makes sense, because Nintendo is sort of known for these JRPGs and these exciting games and these colorful games with all these colorful casts of characters. So really, I think it was a case of Square Enix and Dragon Quest just needing to get the right console, as opposed to getting the right, uh, audience. Uh, that being said, I still think Kingdom Hearts is also an issue for Lara Croft, but they haven't brought that up in this thread yet, so we'll see if that comes up. But I do agree, like, Smash hasn't done a lot of promotional content, actually. Corrin was really the worst of it. Sure, you could say Bayonetta was slightly promotional, just because Bayonetta 1 and 2 were on the Wii U, and obviously it was a, a way of marketing those. Uh, but basically, yeah, Corrin is the only promo pick so far, um, at least from the DLC. Of course, we had, like, Incineroar from the main game, who was basically a promo pick for Sun and Moon. Uh, but overall, uh, I do agree with a lot of these points so far. Corrin's game was already in Japan at that point. Fate sold less than Awakening, and Awakening didn't get that sweet, sweet promotion. It isn't The Tonight Show. Corrin didn't come out and talk about vacation plans, then talk about their upcoming projects to Jimmy Fallon. What on earth is this metaphor? Wouldn't Nintendo want Lara Croft in Smash to draw in more people? If you're promoting your gaming all-stars game to a general slash casual audience, I can't think of a better character to do it than Lara frickin' Croft. I disagree, actually. I feel like even though Lara Croft is a gaming icon and many people know her, 
I don't think she'll draw in the casual audience. I think the casual audience will see, oh hey, Lara Croft, but I don't think they'll necessarily be drawn in by her, because if you think about Lara Croft's moveset, uh, a lot of people will default to her dual pistols, or maybe her bow from the new games, but overall, I think a lot of people would struggle to kind of see how Lara would play, and I can't help but wonder if Lara might play a bit too similarly to Joker when he's not got Arsene, with like the guns, and, and maybe even a knife, because, you know, Lara does like to you know, hurt people with the guns and the stabbing and the, the brutality and her little climbing hook. Uh, I feel like there could be other characters that could easily appeal more to a casual audience, maybe like Steve from Minecraft, given that Minecraft is now officially the best-selling game of all time. Uh, just other characters I feel like maybe fill that niche a bit more. Uh, TLDR, Dragon Quest doesn't have much of a different fan base to Final Fantasy. Lara Croft has points that are being ignored. Promotion in Smash isn't that big of a thing, if it is there at all. Nintendo will want Lara out of Square Enix catalogue. Nintendo... Well, we can't really assume that Nintendo would want Lara. It would be a good choice. That being said, we don't know what Nintendo wants. I'd also disagree. I really like the Final Fantasy games, but I can't stand Dragon Quest, and I know there are a lot of people who feel in a similar fashion. I don't think Dragon Quest and Final Fantasy fans actually overlap as much as people expect them to, because Final Fantasy were these games that basically were iconic in the PlayStation 1 era, and have had many, many years to kind of build themselves up. Dragon Quest never had that popularity in the West, and thus I don't think the fans coalesce and correlate as well as this thread is suggesting. It's okay to not want Lara, but to pretend she doesn't have a chance is ludicrous. Boring moveset? People want slimes. Non-Japanese character? People think Doom Guy has a shot. Just be sure to hold your top picks to the same standard. And that is that. Oh, I thought there'd be more to it, to be honest. I don't disagree that Lara doesn't have- uh, that Lara has a shot. I think she does. I just don't think that she would be picked over the JRPG guys, because they kind of are the poster boys for Square Enix. Uh, you've got the Dragon Quest characters, you've got Sora from Kingdom Hearts. I just feel like Lara, despite being this amazing character, and it would be a great female for the roster as well, because, I mean, there aren't as many women on the roster as there are guys. I think that'd be brilliant for Lara. Uh, that being said, I do realistically think her chance is a lot lesser than some of these other characters. And it's not necessarily like, oh, I just don't like the character. It's just, I'm being realistic here. I'm using my common sense, I'm using my knowledge, and Lara Croft is great, but did she have the demand through the past few years for Nintendo to think, hey, this is a character we should bring on for DLC. I don't think she did in comparison to some of these other characters. Like, I've at least heard Erdrick in speculation videos for the past few years. I know he's not necessarily been the most popular, but people have been clamoring for a Dragon Quest character for a while, uh, even since Smash 4. Same with a lot of Square Enix's other titles and characters, like Sora, for example. I just feel like Lara falls a bit lower on the totem pole. And it's also worth noting that Lara wasn't always owned by Square Enix. A majority of her most popular outings weren't produced by the Square Enix team. She was owned by a different company. So does that also affect Lara as well? Does that affect why Square Enix might not want to put her out there? I don't know. I think that is something for you guys to decide at home, but I am going to leave it there. I will leave a link to the thread down below in the description for you guys to take a look at. Lara, I would say, is probably my third or fourth most likely Square Enix character. I personally would go maybe Erdrick, then Sora, then probably Lara, and then you'd have, like, Chrono, Gino, and all of those guys that everyone else is kind of speculating. If we're not including other, like, Final Fantasy characters as well, because I just don't see Final Fantasy getting anything else after the lackluster DLC from Smash 4 and the two music tracks. I just don't see that happening. Uh, but yeah, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I am gonna go because my voice is dying, uh, but I hope you guys have a wonderful evening wherever you are. Thank you for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.